So guys, as you can see, I'm into a fun mess here of wires. I'm getting all this sorted out. Um, I got the truck turning over, but I kind of forgot and I just wanted to mention this. You got to make sure you double check everything before you go firing one of these up because as you can see, right there, that's a little puddle of transmission fluid and I was like, where the hell is that coming from? So, as you can see down, I don't know if you can see that, right down there, my transmission lines, yeah, you can't really see them there, but they're right there. See those two tranny lines right there? They're not hooked up. They got to hook up to the red here. So, before I do anything else, I got to get those lines hooked up. I'm actually glad it didn't start because that would have been a huge mess. Um, I also really should hook up my coolant lines there, go into my pump. And I need to run a line from here over to here on the carburetor. Um, that's just a steam, a steam line that comes up to the top of this. But yeah, I should hook all that up, I guess, before I try and fire it. I wasn't expecting it to fire anyway, because I still have to delete the vats off of that computer. I just wanted to see if it would kick and run for... Usually it'll only run for about two seconds and then shut down if the vats aren't turned off. So, anyway, that's all I was wanting to do to see if it was going to fire. But it's not firing, and I'm not exactly sure why yet. Um... No doubt I missed something up there in the wiring, but I will get that sorted out. But for right now, I think, before I do any more wiring and try and start it again, I'm going to get those tranny lines hooked up down there. And while I'm at it, I may as well hook up those lines up to my heater core. These here. This one and this one. Uh, Got to run up there to the firewall, so... I may as well do that. Uh, I think then we should be okay to try and start it. Maybe I'll throw some coolant in it too. I may as well, once I get everything hooked up, I'll throw some coolant in it. Um, and just double check the tranny fluid. I think it's fine. There's, It's going to need some, but there's some in it. But I might have, I don't know if I have any tranny fluid. I think I have some up there. So I might chuck a little tranny fluid in it, uh, oil is good in it, and then I'll try and fire it. But for right now we got to get that hooked up, and I may as well hook up these other few coolant lines and stuff too while I'm at it. I just kind of forgot all about that. Um, but everything else is coming good, pretty good. I'm not sure why it's not firing. Um, like I say, it could be a wire I missed over here. There's a lot of these wires you don't even need um, that are in these. So uh, I think I got all the major ones hooked up that I need though, but it is possible I could have missed one. That's always a possibility. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get all them sorted out. And I think I got most of them all sorted out right now. This one here, we don't need that red one. I think I'll take that right out of there. Anyway, all right. Okay guys, so this is the first start after I hooked up all those coolant lines and transmission lines. And as you can see, it fired right up. Um, I did have one wire um, on that connector that was not hooked up and that's why it wasn't wasn't firing um, but by far that um, using that fuse block out of the Silverado is the easiest way uh, to wire one of these up if you have room to put it in in your swap um, 
because everything's already in there and already wired up for you. Um, all your relays are in there. All the fuses are in there that you need. It's already all there and ready to go. So, and as you can see, it's running good here. It sounds good. That's my electronic pedal. This is the first one I did with an electronic pedal and it was actually quite easy to uh, hook up. It was not hard at all. But yeah, it's working good. Alright guys, so um, I'm just cleaning up some of these wires, as you can see, they're uh, quite a mess, so there was a bunch in this red plug that you don't need. All you really need is the, I think I've got a backup lamp and uh, this is my fuel pump wire here. <clears throat> and these here, you don't need these, um, so I'm pulling these out, I kept some of these uh, uh, key on power wires there because I'm using them as you can see um, I figured there was no point in putting relays in and stuff when there's wires already here that will power stuff that I need to power um, I'm using this uh, this is your crank wire for your starter so this gets the signal from my push button start in the truck um, comes out once this makes connection it uh, turns truck over and starts it up. So I'm just trying to clean up some of these wires that I don't need. Um, there's a bunch in this loom here that I need for um, uh, for the, well, if I hook it up, I'm not sure. I have a factory Silverado uh, gauge cluster um, out of the donor truck that this engine came out of. And uh, this is the plug for it, as you can see. That's the plug. Um, so I may run that inside the cab. I'm not 100% sure yet. I did that on one of my other swaps I did. And I I really like those factory uh, Silverado gauge clusters. I wish they were a little bit smaller. Um, but I did put one in my other Colorado. And I really like it because it has all the... Like it has your... Um, obviously fuel and and stuff like that but i like that it has uh well let me get it it's right over here excuse the mess i've been busy as you all know but this is the factory this is out of the silverado so um i really like these gauge clusters because um it's got your oil pressure gauge right here which I really like um, the Colorado gauge clusters they don't have that um, so I think I'm gonna try and use this instrument cluster I'm not a hundred percent sure yet but um, I like the idea of having the oil pressure there uh, it has a voltage gauge which the Colorado doesn't have and then of course temperature and your fuel um, but yeah, I think I'm going to try and use this one. Not 100% sure yet, but I probably will end up using it. Just set that over there for now. Get it away. Don't want to have to get smashed. So yeah, anyway, I'm just going to clean up a bunch of these wires and stuff. Um, yeah, that's all I'm doing right now. And then I've got a couple of things to do underneath the truck. And I think we're just about there. Anyway, stay tuned. Okay, guys. <clears throat> so to get these out, this is what these look like. 
So just a little, I don't know if you can see that or not, can you? Yeah. They're just a little uh, pin that goes inside these. They're not hard to get out. Um, you just pop these out here. I usually just use a little pick. These come out. Just like that. That's it. And then you find the wire that you want to take out. Uh, we're going to pop this green one out. We don't need it. And the other thing is doing it this way. If you do need these wires later on, you can always pop them back in. I save all these wires. I have a whole bunch of them over there on my... That's it. That's how they come out. There's a little tab in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's little tabs here that you pull back on. And like this wire right here, we got to take out. So all we do, there's a little tab there. I usually just push up a little bit on them. I get my pick in there, pull back on the tab slightly, and these just come right out. Just like that. That's how you deep in a connector. So there, that's it. We just got rid of a whole bunch of these wires that we didn't need, which is great. Um, it just kind of cleans everything up and then we just put these back in. Uh, there we go, just like that. And lock in. And this one goes in here. That's it. And then we put this back into the fuse block, push it down a little bit, tighten this up, there we go, that's it. So the way I decided to do this truck is just leave this fuse block in here because I figured it's got all these, all the relays and everything are here that you need for your fuel pump, your starter, all that stuff. So there's really no need to use these um, aftermarket relays if you do it this way. These are the aftermarket relays. And there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. Um, it, it, it's fine. Doing it this way will work too. That's how I did have it. But I decided to move my battery over to the other side and just put this fuse block right here. So I'm going to run two fuse blocks. One fuse block is going to run basically your lights, single lights, um, heater, stuff like that. Um, and the other fuse block, this one, the Silverado fuse block, is going to just take care of mainly um, the engine. Uh, yeah, and I just figured I'd try it this way and see how it works out. This is the first time I did it this way, and so far I would say it's been easier. Um, it's a little bit more figuring out to do with the wires and stuff, but... Because everything plugs into this and I have the pinouts for all these connectors, it's just a matter of hooking the wires up to the right place and it'll run. So anyway, just decided to do it this way and I just thought I'd show you guys how I deep in these connectors and just kind of get rid of some of the wires that we don't need and seems to work pretty good. So anyway, 